Free Prints is the free app for iPhone and Android that lets you print a thousand free 4x6 photos a year with just a small shipping charge. Go to FreePrints.com to get the app and your 1,000 free prints. From high school athlete to looking like a middle-aged man. The shooting suspect's deterioration in just four years and the citizen reporter whose video was seen around the world. There's a shooter, active shooter, get away. His gripping first-hand account and how fate brought them to the supermarket. She was an Instacart shopper. She was buying lunch. She was filling a prescription at the pharmacy and... Viva Las Vegas, the return of big shows to Sin City. Plus, get out of my house. They bought their dream home. So why is the previous owner refusing to give up the keys and leave? This is my house. Then Jay Leno, his public apology about making all those jokes about Asian Americans. And saved by the beer. That guy's a hero. How a can of beer saved him from getting smacked in the head by a baseball. This can of beer saved my life. Plus, with this ring, I the oops. Edition with Deborah Norville. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Investigators in Boulder are still trying to come up with a motive in the terrible shooting at the King Supers grocery store. The suspect, charged with 10 counts of murder, is due in court tomorrow. We've all seen that heart-stopping first-person video of the shooting as it happened. Now the man who filmed it is speaking with Inside Edition. Here's Les Trent. Guys, we got people down inside King Supers. Look, there's... He's the citizen reporter who live streamed the supermarket mass shooting to the world. I don't think there's anything that can prepare you really for seeing what I saw. Dean Schiller was about to buy lunch at the Boulder supermarket with his friend, 20-year-old Denny Stong, when he heard gunfire. It sounded like, pow, pow, pow. And I heard those first three with just a few seconds in between each shot. Were you afraid for your safety? I didn't think at all about my safety, uh, but that sure, it shook me up a little bit when I heard those shots. There's a shooter, active shooter, get away! For the next several get hours, back. Schiller kept recording, capturing every heart-pounding moment for his YouTube channel. 33,000 viewers were watching as the events played out live. Guys, we got an active shooter situation at King Supers. He's inside the building right now. Pops rammed the supermarket wall and smashed windows to find the gunman. They're ripping the whole wall open out there. You need to surrender. Come out with your hands up on arm. Schiller was still live streaming when the accused killer was brought out. Is this the shooter? Did you guys get the shooter? I could see a bloody leg, and so I knew he was injured. He was limping a little bit. It was just shocking. Only later did he discover, to his deep sorrow, that his pal, Denny Stong, was among the gunman's 10 victims. There's now a GoFundMe page in Denny's name. I'm glad I was there to, to capture this, but I'd, I'd give it all back. I'd trade it in a heartbeat to have Denny and all those people back. We're also learning disturbing new details about the accused killer, Ahmed Alaliwi Alisa. Alisa's family lives in this house about 20 miles from Boulder. He has a reputation for bursts of extreme anger. In 2017, he cold cocked a classmate at school and pled guilty to third degree assault. He was a champion wrestler, but was cut from his high school team after throwing a tantrum over losing a match. He was saying, I'm going to kill you guys and walked out, a former teammate says. He was a scary guy. In recent years, he seems to have been in a state of decay. Here he is in his wrestling days in high school. But just four years later, he looks bloated. A physical decline that appears to match his mental state. At least a half a dozen vigils will be held this evening in Boulder in memory of the victims. Sadly, this part of Colorado has done this too many times before. First, there was Columbine, then the Aurora movie shootings. Amber Cagliano with more on the 10 individuals who are the latest to be remembered.
The heartbroken uncle of the young supermarket manager is speaking out today. There's a hole. There's a hole in our family. He says 25-year-old Ricky Ald's dreams were cut short. She was vibrant. She was bubbly. She had ambitions. She was moving up the ladder in King Supers. She didn't get to experience motherhood. She didn't get to experience marriage. She has a little brother who's taken this really tough. One of Ricky's grieving co-workers also spoke. Anything to make you smile, to make you laugh. If you were having that bad day, Ricky was there to make it better. The anguished mother of slain Boulder police officer Eric Talley is also bearing her grief. My son gave his life to save those people. He gave it all. And the hate still continues. We're learning more about how fate brought the other victims of the King Supers massacre to the supermarket. Lynn Murray was filling an order for Instacart. She worked as a shopper for the grocery store delivery service. 20-year-old Denny Stong was buying lunch. Nevin Stanizic was fixing the coffee machine. Terry Liker worked at the supermarket. 49-year-old Lana Barkowiak was filling a prescription at the store's pharmacy. The King Supers tragedy is sending shockwaves across America, and it really hit close to home for Frank DeAngelis, former principal of Columbine High School, scene of the 1999 massacre. When the uh, situation happened in Boulder, I happened to be at Columbine High School planning a day of service for the 22nd anniversary. People are texting me, telling me what's going on in Boulder, so it was a tough day. Craig Scott survived the Columbine shootings. His sister Rachel was among the 13 fatalities that terrible day. Everyone that was at that grocery store that was nearby, their lives are gonna be forever different. That's a traumatic event, and it's gonna take a long time of healing process. It just takes a community to, to put aside little differences and come together for one another. Since the Columbine attack in 1999, more than 660,000 Americans have lost their lives to gun violence. On a more hopeful note, another sign of life returning to the old normal, Vegas is back. After being dark for nearly a year, the glittery shows of Las Vegas are back on with some COVID-inspired changes. Megan Alexander takes you behind the scenes. It's the return of sparkly costumes and feathery headdresses to the Las Vegas Strip. The Las Vegas production, Extravaganza, is now inviting 250 audience members to enjoy the spectacular sights and sounds that Las Vegas is known for. Inside Edition was given exclusive backstage access to check out the changes made to safely pull off a production during the pandemic. First, every dancer must wear a mask. This performer says wearing a mask is a big challenge. It was very uncomfortable at the beginning and sometimes it's, it still is. Inside the makeup station, performers are spaced out on opposite ends of the room. It's an adjustment for sure. We all warm up in our own section. The head of wardrobe is now in charge of defogging costumes. We use it twice a night or more. Audience seats are also sanitized, as well as tables and railings. As eager customers wait to enter, they're informed about the new rules. Inside the theater, please keep nose and mouth covered. Between drinks of a beverage, please cover your nose and mouth. They can walk like this. Show director Sheer Davide showed Inside Edition Stacey Galandi how the entire show had to be reblocked to keep the performers a safe distance from the audience. So this, this is called the COVID line? Yeah, we call it the COVID line. Um, it's keeping us from a safe distance from the audience. This couple visiting from Phoenix couldn't wait to be back at a Las Vegas show. Well, the show is great and the staff here is incredible. Hey! Fans say it's fantastic that Las Vegas is reopening. Loving it! Very exciting! Yes. Yeah, it's good Loving for the city. Las Vegas is proving that even in a pandemic, the show must go on. The Las Vegas Gaming Board estimates more than $6 billion in revenue was lost because of the pandemic. Buying a new home can be a challenging experience, but few have had the problems that this couple is facing. They found their dream home, bought it, and paid for it. But when it came time to move in, they tell Jim Murray the old owners wouldn't move. This woman is trying to get into the house, but her access is being blocked, and it's her own home. Yes. Okay. Hey. 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 You want to do a song? You want to do a song? Hey. 
you want to get out of my home? Tracy Albert and her husband Miles used their savings to buy this four bedroom dream home in Riverside, California 14 months ago, but they have not been able to move in, even though they've been paying the mortgage every month. He just said he wasn't leaving. That was it. Wasn't going to leave the house, barricaded himself in the house. So who's the guy blocking their way, refusing them entrance to their own home? It's the previous owner. Do you think that this was his plan from the beginning? Yes. Realtor Chris Taylor says he's never seen anything like this in 18 years selling homes. Every I was dotted, T was crossed, everything that could have been done was done and there's nothing that could have been done to actually prevent this. The previous owner of this home is now relying on the coronavirus eviction moratorium, which prevents anyone from getting kicked out of their home during the pandemic. But the couple says that they closed on this house in January 2020 before any government mandate was put into effect. I definitely think it's a case of fraud that he knew he wasn't going to move out, staged uh, boxes to look like he was going to move out, and then stayed behind. The Alberts say the courts keep pushing their case back. I can't walk onto the lot. I was told that would be trespassing. I've been there. The sheriffs have told me to leave. The alleged squatter, Hassam Bakhtar, and his family have apparently stopped taking care of the property. So all of this was beautiful when you bought it. Beautiful and green. The trees, beautiful palm trees that are all yellow. There's all weeds. Our cameras were there when the homeowner tried one more time to get inside. Hello? You think he's home? Yeah, he doesn't leave. I also tried to talk to the family. Mr. Boktor, Jim Murray from Inside Edition. But no one came to the door. What would you say to him if he came to the door now? Get out of my house. The couple says they hope the mess will be resolved when they head to court in June. Other news today, the rash of attacks on Asian Americans shows no signs of abating, despite the massive attention being paid to the issue. And now Jay Leno is apologizing for jokes he made in the past that he now says were wrong. Jay Leno is sorry for all of those jokes he's told about Asian communities during his many years hosting The Tonight Show and beyond. At the time I did those jokes, I genuinely thought them to be harmless. I am issuing this apology. I do not consider this particular case to be another example of cancel culture, but a legitimate wrong that was done on my part. Leno's public apology comes as a wave of Asian American hate crimes are sweeping America. The gutsy 75-year-old woman who fought back with a stick after being punched in the face is paying it forward today. Xiao Shen Shi was standing at an intersection in San Francisco when police say a total stranger just punched her in the eye for no reason. A GoFundMe page was set up to help pay for medical expenses, and it has raised almost $1 million. So what has she decided to do with the money? She is donating every penny to help combat anti-Asian racism. All the funds generated in this GoFundMe fund me, go back to the Asian American community to combat racism, her family posted. The suspect, identified as 39-year-old Stephen Jenkins, is also accused of attacking an 83-year-old Asian man stopping for groceries. Oh my God! Another Asian American woman also fought back an attack after her purse was stolen on the streets of San Francisco. You can see the woman hanging onto the side of the car as it speeds off before she finally has to let go. What the Good Samaritans rushed to her aid. She was banged up, oh but God. fortunately will be okay. Almost 4,000 attacks on Asian Americans have been reported in just the last year, more than half of them against women. If you're sitting in foul ball territory at the ballpark, sometimes it helps to have quick reflexes. And a can of beer is not a bad idea either. Here's the pitch. That's hit hard. Foul. Foul balls in baseball can be dangerous. In this case, a beer can saves the day. This can of beer saved my life. Look again. The impact makes the can explode, sending beer all over Joe Ayala and everyone close to him. It happened during the LA Angels Oakland A's game in Tempe, Arizona. I remember sitting down. I didn't get it, sip my beer. And then I heard people scream and I thought it was a home run. So I looked up, didn't see a ball. I looked over towards the batter and you just saw a ball coming right for us. Were you soaked? Oh, yeah, God. my glasses yeah. were wet, my hat was wet, my shirt was soaking wet. The split second moment of impact was captured by photographer Mark Rebillis. How in the world did you get that shot? It was just fast reflexes. I was shooting the batter and then the ball went foul into the crowd and I just whipped the camera to the crowd and pushed the button as I was doing it. It made for a really interesting picture. 
Joe's girlfriend, Megan, didn't see it coming. She was looking at her cell phone. I look over at Joe and all I see is beer exploding everywhere. Today, they're thrilled it turned out the way it did. On the beer can, you can see how close to the top it hit. So just a few inches above it could have very well ended up my face, my collarbone, his elbow. It could have gone so wrong. Here's the pitch. Not many people can say that. The Angels sent Joe some fresh beer along with an autograph bat. Next, with this ring, I the oops. Oh my God, it went through. Oh. And no! why is she freaking out? No! <laughs> Inside Edition with Deborah Norville will be right back. Are you planning to travel this summer? You need an expert's advice. CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg is the host of the Ion Travel podcast. New episodes available every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. It's that part of the wedding ceremony where the guy says, with this ring, I be wed. Only instead of slipping the ring on his bride's finger, he dropped it. Usually not a problem, except the couple was standing on a dock over the second deepest lake in America. Here's what happened next. What a beautiful setting for a wedding. But the picture-perfect ceremony ended in chaos when the nervous groom dropped the ring into Frigid Lake Tahoe. You can hear the bride's disbelief. Andrew Kent was taking the ring box out of his pocket when... Oops. It kind of plopped right out mm -hmm. and then just went right down through the crack in the dock. <laughs> you could see the bride-to-be, Marley, try and catch it. Immediately I was like, that didn't happen. That, that couldn't have happened. Yep, it happened. Andrew got down on all fours and so did Marley in her beautiful gown. We could see it laying on a boulder. Andrew contemplates jumping into the water, but the minister told him not to risk hypothermia. So it was on with the ceremony, minus the ring. We were just so happy and so in the moment, though, that... We were able to continue on. Of course, his ring was safe. Marley pretended to throw it over her shoulder before sliding it on his finger. Luckily, Phil Abernathy from the Tahoe Scuba Group came to the rescue. The hunt is on. We're going to find this thing. The seasoned diver jumped into the water the next day. He had them drop a pebble through the same crack. That really helped Phil find pinpoint the spot the ring was about five feet down i go up to the surface and i go hey guys one last question and they're going yeah totally what's going on i'm like did your ring look like this he held up the ring and we were just ecstatic it was perfect this has happened before a local scuba instructor says he has personally retrieved four or maybe five rings from the same lake still to come no! why is she freaking out no! <laughs> this is The Takeout with Major Garrett. Delighted to have Peter Greenberg with us talking all about travel. Are people smuggling alcohol on planes? Oh, absolutely. What could happen at 35,000 feet where you have altitude and alcohol and somebody who doesn't want to do something? No flight attendant wants to be a police person. And yet there are a lot of people walking on planes already tanked. For more from this week's conversation, follow The Takeout with Major Garrett on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Finally today, oh baby. You are. <laughs> this woman is just finding out her sister no! is pregnant. No! <laughs> happy, happy sister. <laughs> we think she's excited. And that's Inside Edition for today. I'm Deborah Norville. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.